Welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. <coughs> and today's topic is making meaning. But before we get started, let's just take a minute to get present. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Fill your lungs with that vital life energy and as you exhale, release any tension in your neck and your shoulders and your back and your jaw. And let's take another deep breath in and hold it and feel that life vitality, that energy just flowing through you and radiating beyond you and exhale anything that's in the way of you being here right now. And let's gently press our palms together. Softly rub your fingers against your palms. Feel the tingling in your fingers. Feel the tingling in your palms. And let's become present. So today's topic is making meaning. And uh, when I was thinking about this, I remembered years and years ago, like lots of years ago, I took a training, the S training which later became Landmark edu Education, which is still around. And I would say is probably responsible for a pretty big consciousness shift on the planet. But um, anyway, it was a pretty, it was a boot camp kind of training uh, years ago with crazy, crazy hours and no bathroom breaks or very few. And, and uh, it was kind of, military at that time it's evolved to a whole other place but anyway uh it was three days uh, um and very rigorous and at the end of it what we came out with was life is empty and meaningless and i hit the ceiling <laughs> inside i was like what are you kidding me I, you know, after all this, you're telling me life is meaningless, me, life is empty and meaningless. And I had some few choice words <laughs> to say, you know, like you, you've got to be kidding me. And, um, what I got from that, what I got from that is that we ascribe meaning to life in our experience of it. And, I find this to be true on so, so, so many levels. Let me just stop before I dig in and say hello first to Dido. Thank you so much for being here. And good morning, Annette. Welcome. I'm so glad you're here. So we're talking about meaning, making meaning or being meaning makers as human beings. And so, you know, I've pretty much spent my life in search of meaning or in pursuit of meaning. And um, I think we all want to believe that our lives have meaning. And what we do, what we get to do is we get to make that. We get to decide uh, the meanings that we ascribe to things. Sometimes those meanings are uh, programmed culturally and uh, sometimes we make meaning based on our experience. So let's, let's look at what, what this meaning making can be, particularly now, particularly in this moment of so much upheaval on so many levels with COVID, with uh, Black Lives Matter, with, with protesting and um, expression and our whole, our whole foundation uh, being challenged and shifted in so, so many ways, we get to decide what meaning we're ascribing to this. And I, I choose, I choose to make meaning that's life affirming and this meaning making goes from the very intimate interactions between two people to international and global events. And so 
if we start with the individual, you might catch a glance from someone and make that mean something particular. And it may be that we're interpreting to a certain degree. However, we need to recognize that whatever we're interpreting, we're interpreting from our very individual lens. And our lens is characterized by our cultural experiences, by our personal experiences, uh, and we, we get to be aware and alert to come to a place of choice around this. So for right now, with, with COVID and with all the social unrest that's occurring right now, I'm making it mean that we are in the midst of a profound and global transformation, that we have the opportunity now to see things through a new lens, to be able to recognize longstanding issues and systems and, and policies that are broken and have been broken for a long time. We get to choose what we make these protests mean. We, we can choose to make them mean a temporary upheaval, or we can choose to allow them and make them mean a pathway into a new future. If we pay attention, if we communicate, I see that we have such phenomenal opportunities now to transform humanity after a history, a long, long history of separation and um, discrimination and prejudice. And this is not just unique to this moment in time by any stretch of the imagination. It goes back centuries and centuries. And so let's look at how we make meaning and where that's coming from internally. Certainly, we have had so many experiences in a very compressed period of time that challenge us on the most profound levels, levels of literal and physical survival, and also the survival of our ideas. So many of us through this COVID crisis have been, I, I, I want to say this COVID event rather than crisis because yes it has been tragic for many many people and it has impacted us on so many levels uh, socially physically economically culturally it's challenged us to look at life in a different way and what's happening i believe is that there's been a dissolution of so many deeply and long held beliefs where these ideas have been challenged so profoundly that we get to look at things that were invisible before, things that we took for granted. And that says, yes, I agree, it's an opportunity. And so what I'm making all this mean is that we have an unprecedented opportunity to make change for the better in the world. So COVID enabled us to be starting to question the things that we never even looked at because we were in such a constant flow around just maintaining our lives. We had a hard stop and it forced us in many ways to reassess and reevaluate. And it pointed out the brokenness of so many of our institutions and our policies. And now to have this uprising afterwards, to have this moment where George Floyd became the catalyst. Now this has been longstanding. I'm not pretending that this is a new thing but I do think it is a new moment. And it, we have become, we had become so 
desensitized to the the inequities in our society that we we just did not did not give those give those issues the attention that they deserved karen palmer's in the house karen i can't believe you're here i'm so grateful to have you karen is a remarkable human being who is propagating kindness and peace and tremendous generosity and uh, we're here on enlightened world network i invite you to seek her out seek out her programming she's a force of nature karen says we decide if we live a divine or distracted life thank you for this confirmation that's exactly true a, a divine or distracted life that's so beautiful so um, I just I just want to say let's let's continue on with this talking about our opportunity to be making meaning and we can make this me moment a meaningful moment we can make this moment a pivotal moment in human history by saying yes yes i recognize this yes i am accountable to this yes i have the power to contribute to positive and planetary transformation and yes i'm going to do my part to to make a difference and to make this meaningful so Annette says, I choose the divine life to share my love for people and the world. Absolutely, that's beautiful. And Karen gave me such a beautiful compliment. Mira, you're a magnificent gift to our planet. Thank you for adding your love and light. Keep shining. Karen, right back at you. So let's, I, I want to I talk about this making meaning thing. Years ago, I smoked cigarettes at one point. And uh, at, I heard an, a public service announcement on the radio, and it was Yul Brynner. And Yul Brynner, if you don't know who he was, he was a magnificent, magnificent actor. And um, he, he died of lung cancer. And so this public service advertisement was him saying, that here, here he's speaking from beyond the grave, saying that he ended up dying from s smoking cigarettes and, and cancer and stop, stop smoking. And I was very conscious. I was in my car. I was in Camden, New Jersey. I was a sales rep at that time. And I heard this public service announcement and what went through my head was I have a conscious and deliberate opportunity here to make a decision to make what I just heard meaningful and to allow it to touch me to allow it to change me and at that moment I chose to make it meaningful that this man was speaking to me from beyond the grave and that I stopped smoking and that was the end of it and we have that choice to make this moment meaningful to make it the moment when the tide turns for humanity um, Karen Palmer says it's a pivotal moment, and every one of us is important for the future of the planet. Exactly. We are all called to use our voice for positive change. And Daddy Cato, Cadio, I think, says thank you. Welcome, Daddy. Uh, so we have the opportunity. This is a gift. This is a magical, miraculous moment in all of human history where we can redefine the way that humanity interacts with 
human beings of difference, whether it be of different color or different religion or different socioeconomic background or different appearance or different gender identification. We get to make this a pivotal and profound transformational moment for humanity. And I don't believe that there's ever been a moment in all of human history where we knew that how connected we are globally <clears throat> and where we had the opportunity to transcend our history and transcend our difference to come to a place of unity and connection. And I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm not saying that we even know how because it's never ever been done on a global scale. In fact, we haven't even been able to achieve it yet in this country. But let's use this opportunity to learn about each other, to connect with each other, to have civil conversation across political lines even, across uh, political issues. Let's find a way to connect with each other beyond our differences and realize that we're the ones that make the meaning. So we're the ones that are defining the difference as well. And what if, what if we looked for connection? What if we looked at what we have in common? What if we used that commonality of heart and spirit to go to a whole new place of what is possible for humanity when we all care for the well-being of each other? Karen says, I love your sharing this. It's time to believe in and take our internal back, internal power back. And thank you, Karen. I agree because we all have the power now and we are all called to rise up together for humanity and humane being. That means treating each other with the respect and the reverence that we all so much deserve and so many of us have been deprived of. And um, Jorge says, we are all right. And I, I don't know, uh, Jorge, you were driving the other day and you were using, um, I think you were dictating to the uh, text. So I don't know if that's what you mean, but we will be all right. We will have the opportunity to get through this. Um, Karen says the external power falling apart is a mirror of what many in society believe about themselves. We need to change these beliefs. And uh, Jorge says he's not dictating to the uh, text today. So um, let's talk about what's falling apart on the external. In order, I'm sure you've all heard, destruction precedes creation. So we have all these structures that are built that are holding life in place and that need to be dissolved in order to make way for the new. So we can't, if you have a building that is a, um, a falling apart, you can't build a new building on top of it. And we could keep patching it and patching it and trying to correct where, you know, there were um, dangerous faults in the building. But at some point, that building just needs to be torn down. And what's happening, in my view, is that, what's ha that, that the, what appears to be destruction is the dissolution of things that are broken that just don't any longer work. And of course there's disruption. Of course there's upheaval because we're remaking something. You know, if you even think about a plant 
coming through the ground. It's breaking the ground to be able to come up into the sunlight. And what that's what we're doing. Jorge says, I meant we all have part of the solution inside. New white new wine skins so what what we are doing here and what we have the opportunity to do and this goes back to making meaning i'm making this mean that we have the new beginnings and we all have the opportunity to really connect with what's available with those new beginnings yes there's a falling away of the old Yes, that's going to be painful. Yes, there's upheaval. And in that, in that melee, in that, that um, dust from the uh, destruction of that building, as the building implodes, there's going to be dust and there's going to be rubble. But what happens then is that there will be clear space, that there is room to make a new and that's what we're doing now is we're cleaning out the rubble we're we're seeing those structures crumbling and let's let this be the time where they truly crumble enough to start fresh let's start new let's heal this thing and by this thing I mean not just the racial divide and the oppression of people of color. But let's heal the way we interact with the planet. Let's heal the way that we have prioritized money over humanity, over the planet, over long-term welfare for all people and all beings on this planet. Let's <coughs> really dig in and reevaluate and recreate from a place of possibility and love and connection. Let's bring forth a new future, a new world where we can actually sustain ourselves and our planet. So this is that moment. I'm making that meaning. I invite you to join me in making the meaning that this is the, the, the dark before the dawn. This is the night that we pass through to create a new day, and we can do that together. So I, I am so grateful to have you here joining me today. I so thank you for your engagement it's it's wonderful to have people to communicate with you know to not just be speaking here in a vacuum and um, I'm here on weekday mornings at 9 a.m. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and that you really explore possibility let's dream a new dream of what humanity can be and let's bring that dream into being and in the meantime check out the other wonderful programming here on enlightened world be sure to check out and look up karen palmer she is an emissary for kindness and love and let's let's really make the meaning that this is not an ending but a new beginning with love and deep compassion i hope i'll see you again here next week monday 9 a.m eastern this is mira rubin on the core connection